First, the new financial targets, they are here. I quote them through one by one. First, net sales. So the new net sales target is at least 3.5 million with minimum mid single digit organic currency neutral annual growth. The change versus the previous target is that with this target, we are back to accelerated growth of roughly 6.5% compound annual growth rate. Bearing in mind that during the past few years, we have been there at roughly 5% level. The main driver remains in organic growth. We have said that organic growth should be minimum mid single digit. But we have now also included acceleration in our growth target. Second, profit. The target is that our annual EBIT growth, excluding non recurring items, is ahead of net sales growth, meaning that our profitability will improve year on year. And that's the main focus there. So we are now con uh, focusing on continuous profitability improvement. Cash flow conversion, free cash flow net profit at least 80%. So you can see that we have kept cash flow target unchanged when it comes to definition, but we have taken down the value from 100% to 80%. Due to the fact that we see that 80% is more sustainable, bearing in mind how much we are going to grow organically, and it's also now aligned with our dividend policy we introduced some six months ago, targeting sustainable, steadily increasing dividend, reflecting our earnings performance. And then the fourth target, net the DBDA, we kept unchanged. The logic of the new financial targets, let's go through it one by one. But before going there, so what's the rationale behind is that we are not the same company we were in 2010, when the current targets were set, we have a new baseline. And the new baseline is that in 2015, roughly 70% of our businesses are at or above the value creation targets. And how we have defined this value creation target is that it's 5% growth, 10% profitability. So a major part of the company is already performing there. And the ones who are not yet there, the underperformers, they are also improving. And we have further enabled this improvement by restructuring. You might remember that we had quite significant restructuring in spot equipment in 2012. And last year, we, had re we started restructuring in the individual post spot, which will be completed by end of this year. We have also piloted acceleration through MA. So during the past six months, we have made three acquisitions. First, we acquired Louisville Slacker for our team sport. Then we acquired Sports Tracker for our new digital platform. And a month ago, we, uh, we announced acquisition of Queenox to complete our offering in fitness business. The logic for the growth is that we have built capabilities, we have built uh, platforms there for accelerations. So I would say that the machine is by and large ready for this 3.5 billion sales. More than 80% of our sales is already covered by our own uh, net sales network, so we have taken in-house sales, and that's the way how we have driven integration so that it provides scale benefits, not only for core businesses, but also for those five acceleration areas. And as you can see here in the picture, those five acceleration areas are practically covering the whole company. So we can say that this growth from acceleration is truly broad-based. On profitability, three important points there. The first, first is that this scaled-up model, what we already have in place, is, has delivered roughly five points improvement there in gross margin, and then roughly one point improvement there as OPEX percentage of sales. So we know how to run the machine. Then the five accelerators there, they are also driving our mix toward better gross and EBIT margin structure. So they are further enabling us to improve profitability. And thirdly, investment OPEX, how we have defined it, its share of our total OPEX growth has been now trending, trending down, and it continued trending down. 
I'll open up this OPEX part a bit more in the next slide. So platform investments, what we have made during the past five years of roughly 100 million. So we have invested in capabilities, we have invested in platforms worth of 100 million from 2010 to 2015. Investments there in Apparna Footwear, USA, China, and B2C are increasingly completed. So we see that their share of the further investment is trending down all the time. And those businesses are moving so-called pay-as-you-go model. And pay-as-you-go model for us means that that kind of investment with lengthy payback is not more needed for those ones, but they are already paying back during a quite short of time. Therefore, the remaining investments what's left are mainly focusing on connected devices and digital services. Here on the picture you can see that the investments, they were peaking up in 2012, and now 13, 14, trending down, and that trend also continues now in 2015. One thing worth of mentioning here is the logic of not having 10% anymore as our target. So 10% has been very important, not only externally, but internally for us, because that has been the guiding light for all our internal efficiency programs, what we have put place during the past five years. The fact is that we could reach 10% pretty easily just by squeezing down the ongoing and the planned investments. As Heike said, next year we are opening 30 new stores just by putting those on hold. It's definitely short-term profit improvement. But we don't want to be one quarter or one year heroes and then running out to be limb blocks there for long term. We see that these accelerations, what Heike just went through, are so attractive long-term that we continue investing long-term. However, at the same time with the new target, when we are committing to continuous profitability improvement, now we are better balancing short-term and long-term. The third target, our cash flow logic, as said, we've taken down the cash flow conversion from 100% uh, to 80%, and you can see here that that 100% target has not been sustainable during the current glide path. The reason for 80% is that with 80% target, we can continue investing in apparel and footwear growth, which is rather working capital intensive. It's also modeled so that with continuous profitability improvement, with continuous growth towards 3.5 billion, and with, we need to continue driving further working capital efficiencies, especially in those low growth, uh, slow growth businesses. And the new target is also aligned with our dividend policy, so we can balance the organic growth and then payments to our owners. One important point, how we are driving further uh, uh, cash flow improvement is how we are improving our asset efficiency. And apparent food fair acceleration has improved our working capital turnover. When I said that apparent food fair are rather working capital intensive, that's the only part of their capital employed. We have no manufacturing assets there, we have very small goodwills. And therefore, more we have this kind of asset light businesses in our capital employed, better turnover rates we have at the group level. You can see that we have improved our capital turnover from 1.5 times to 1.8 times by 2015. The good thing also is that all those five accelerators are asset lighter than the balance of the company. And therefore, more we have those in our portfolio, better turnover we are now uh, running also at the group level. The attractiveness of the acceleration, why we believe it makes sense, why we believe that focusing on those five things are creating value for the company. The value creation in our model is coming from two sources. First is sustainable growth model, Heike went through, focusing on faster growth, higher profitability, and better asset efficiency. 
simultaneously acceleration drives also company transformation. So that, first of all, we are not anymore a turnaround company, we have a proven track record. Also, we are coming less and less dependent on external uh, factors there. The portfolio is more balanced between soft goods and hard goods. The portfolio is more balanced between B2C and wholesale. And then also, regional split is now better balanced between EMEA, APAC and Americas. So therefore, the company risk profile is also changing. We have more mitigation, mitigation tools in our portfolio when we face uh, headwinds there, so we can mitigate it elsewhere in, the, uh, elsewhere in the portfolio. And that makes this attractive both ways, higher, higher return of capital employed and lower risk profile for the company. I'll open both parts of here more in detail. Start first with susta sustainable growth model. So component, first, uh, component one is how our acceleration drives profitability. As Heike said, we have used 2015 here as a market consensus, assuming it's not totally wrong. And therefore, the old glide pad, as already mentioned, would have taken us to roughly 3 billion. The new one is driving at least 3.5 billion with improved profitability. Component two, asset efficiency. How we have modeled the whole new whole new acceleration shows that the old plans, old glide pad, would only marginally improve our asset turnover. From the current roughly 1.8 level, the improvement has been practically next to nothing based on the way we have been running the businesses. However, the acceleration takes us totally new, new levels there, two times and more. The result then, Combining our fast growth with accelerated profitability with uh, better asset efficiency drives better return of capital employed for the company. And that's one key principle why we see this acceleration is more attractive than the old model. Then the right part of this uh, value creation, I how our portfolio profile is changing also than chasing the risk profile. Here you can see our top line growth and structure, 2009-2020. As you can see, minimum 6.5% compound annual growth is now built for the new glide pad. However, let's focus more on the structure of our sales. So in 2009, apparel and footwear were less than one-fifth of our portfolio and Wintersport took 25% uh, of the whole sales. By end of the new glide pad, we see that soft goods is more than 40% of the sales, and Wintersport roughly 10%, so much better balance between soft goods and hard goods. At the same time, out of these 3.5 billion sales, 400 million is coming from own B2C, and then, as I already mentioned, the uh, geographical split is much more balanced. This, this change gives us this firepower for negative news, what we eventually will face during the glide pad. So I went through the logic of the new targets, why we see, why we think they are attractive. Let's focus now on how we are equipped for, the acquisition, uh, for acceleration. So cash flow and balance sheet, uh, from cash flow and balance sheet point of view, they are not barriers for growth. Our long-term funding is in place, so that they, it's enabling our acceleration. And just as a reminder before moving to the next slide, what are our priorities for use of gas? Practically nothing has changed there, so we are securing organic growth. We are maintaining sustainable dividend growth as per our new dividend policy, and also use of gas prioritized acquisitions. The one thing what you can see here is that sell buybacks are not any more activity on the list. We mainly use them for compensation programs, if so needed, but we are not prioritizing them. On balance sheet side, 
the organic glide path, what we have now in place towards 2020, including all the investment in organic growth, would give us further leverage, bearing in mind that our net debt target was unchanged at three times EBDA. So running the current organic, plan, current organic light pad as planned, we would increase our firepower there from roughly 300 million all the way up to 900 plus million by end of the glide path for potential acquisition. Then on funding side, the new arrangement what we have done this year, late last year, they are all targeting to extend the maturity of our loan portfolio so that we are targeting five plus years maturity there, the old target being roughly three years. And these are all synchronized now with the new glide path. At the same time, we have significant savings there in our financing cost. So that the average coupon for the portfolio is down roughly 250 basis point. And interest cost will be down by one third from 2014 level by 2016. At the same time, we have reserves and cash available for 400 million, if so needed. As mentioned, acquisition a couple of times today, both in Heikis and my presentation, and we have already piloted them three times this year. It's worth of mentioning how acquisitions are also enabler for our growth. And on acquisitions, we have set, set clear criteria there, both for both qualitative ones and then also financial ones. And qualitative ones are synchronized with our sustainable growth model so that acquisition must drive growth, better profitability, and better asset efficiency. Simultaneously, we have said that we are not diluting our company valuation with acquisition. That's the primary principles. Of course, if there are acquisitions with very low-hanging benefits or there are critical capability caps we can fulfill with acquisition, then we need to balance uh, this criteria and acquisition target. But that's the primary target, not to dilute our company valuation. On top of that, we have portfolio logic for, for our acquisition. And I'll explain it with this picture. So here you can see how our businesses are put on the map based on market share or expected growth in those businesses. And with this acquisition target based either on gaining scale, driving consolidation, or driving acceleration. I tried to illustrate the logic with the three cases. So when we acquired uh, Louis Slucker, it was pure consolidation case. For business like baseball, which is rather slow growing, the way to grow in that business is through acquisition. This is like in any fast moving consumer goods, although baseball is not very fast moving. But the logic remains the same. If you want to grow profitably in those businesses, which are in slow growth categories, the acquisition is the best way to do it. Sport Tracker was pure scale acquisition and scale here in small terms. What we acquired was R&D capacity. What we acquired was database of existing user and that know-how what the team had. So it was scaling up our own digital platform. And same go for Queenox. So this functional training, which were lacking in our portfolio, we did not have anything there in fitness. By just having that business there, we can say that uh, Precor is now full category provider in fitness business. And this logic remains the same no matter what are acquisition in, in questions. As you can see, we haven't ruled out any of our existing business here for potential acquisition. A summary. We have a new acceleration glide pad, populated with the building blocks and aligned financial targets. And why we believe this is so attractive is that acceleration drive value creation based how we have built it in. Balance sheet and cash flow, 
both are enabling to uh, acceleration, i.e. we are not limited by any of this kind of facts. And then, as mentioned, acquisitions are now included in our toolbox for further acceleration.